Hey, what's up everyone? On this episode of Roscoe's Reef, we're talking about changing the engine under the hood, a little coral growth, and a little happy disaster that it happened. So stay tuned. So as I mentioned in the opening, there's a lot of uh, details to go over this week, so we might as well just jump right into it. Uh, the first thing that you're going to take notice is the center structure in my tank has changed. It's changed a lot from the last update because of this. In a few days ago, one of the corals was falling onto that shelf, and when I went to grab it, I hit that shelf, which caused the whole center structure to shift. And trying to fix it, the whole center structure collapsed. Thank goodness it didn't hit my glass or anything. I was able to, you know, catch the rocks as they fell and put them in buckets right away. But it caused me to re-rockscape this whole center. Which, as you see it, I kind of like better than the old one. I have more room to put corals. And uh, it caused me to, to gain... A huge gap here which is something that I really want to keep and also it gave me a lot of area in the back to for the fish to swim and also to clean the glass so uh, now let's move on to the corals themselves as you can see this torch coral in the last three days has taken off these tentacles the longest of all of them the the sweep of tentacles on the top those are about I would say, if I had a guess, about five to seven inches long. This coral is really growing a lot. So I don't know whether he's getting jealous because I put a new one in. This is the one from Coral Lust, which is really doing well in the tank. So this section of Euphelia is, is I'm really enjoying. The frog spawn is, as always, doing well. This hammer retracted a little bit because that torch, with the day that it, the rockscape fell, had fallen on top of it, and that's what caused the whole issue. The anemones, well, the one that was having the problem finally succumbed to its problems and died on me. So I removed that from the tank, so I'm left with the one. The A cans, the one from Danny at Coral Lust, and also the ones that I had in the tank are doing well. The A can from Coral Lust is getting bigger and under the itinix really really looks good there's growth out of the corals from fish of hex and now that these two are a little lower in the tank they're loving life there's more growth coming off this one uh, those little points you see coming off the top the first zoa garden garden is doing really well and the utter chaos has another head forming you can just see under the back one, um, well, maybe I can't get that, but underneath that back one, there's another head forming. Um, these are filling out, these red ones right here, the red skirts, they've never been this open this wide. This candy cane coral took a beating. It got hit by a rock, and the stem of it, which you can't see at all, was snapped in half. Now when I put it back on, it was totally deflated and I was, had nothing but skeleton in my hand and I thought for a minute that I had lost this piece. But in a couple of days after the accident, it puffed back up and is now looking really good. The new Zoas are continually taking off and opening up. More and more of the, the ones that aren't, are refusing to open are coming up each day. So. What my plans are is I do have a rock soaking to be put in here. I'm going to raise these up off the sand and hopefully uh, the ones that aren't open will respond positively to that. The new red mushroom, they have opened. This one decided to move on me. So um, we'll have to see about that, whether it's going to pop off another piece or not and reproduce itself. 
and then we'll start the process of filling out this rock with mushrooms. The Duncan Coral, now that it's over here, is starting to come out more and more, and I can honestly say that I have um, a lot of hope that this is totally recovered. The purple candy canes now have shifted position and they're over here. There's no negative response to them being here. So that's where they'll be staying from now on. The purple digitata, again, really doing well. A piece of it snapped off when it got run into by one of the fish. But the one thing that I am seeing, and maybe if I can catch this on camera, these sprouts are coming up off the top. So it's starting to stretch itself towards the top now. The Hollywood Stunner Chalice um, keeps getting beat up. My fish actually snapped part of this one off. I'm leaving it here because those two pieces, based on my experience, will um, encrust on that rock and start to grow out. I put another one over here, so that will grow another piece of chalice there. And you can see the Montipora is, is gro having growth, like I said before. So. That's, as far as the corals, that's the update on those. There's no real update on the fish with the exception of every, everybody's growing, staying fat and healthy. So now down in the sump area, everybody knows that I currently have a 20 gallon sump uh, refugium. This is going to be changed out. Uh, you may have seen on Reefing with Billy Pipes, he constructed for me a 40 gallon sump and really did a lovely job so the engine on my system is going to change to this and let me tell you something pictures do no justice on this tank it's really a sturdy sturdy sump design these interior baffles are really tight in there and there's no problem with the cork connection between the cork, the baffle, and the glass, it's a very strong joint. So I'm really excited about getting this into my system and starting a whole new chapter as far as filtration is concerned. Now moving back up into the top, top of the tank here, uh, one thing I did want to mention is when I put my new sump in, I'm probably going to take one of my old BRS reactors and put charcoal in it. I do have a little bit of a cloudiness to the water, not much, but there is particulate floating around in the tank. So I'd like to push the charcoal reactor on to polish the water and just get it really, really nice and clear for me. Um, the only other thing I have is I'm going to turn on the blue lights because I wanted you to see just how the tank glows with the new coral. And I've never been this happy with my tank right now as I've been since just putting the new corals in the tank. My tank is starting to slowly look more and more like a full blown reef. And when these fill out, it, I hope, will look like uh, a lot of the tanks you see on YouTube. So, that's basically it for the update this week. Uh, as always, uh, this is Scott, and I'll talk to you next time around the reef tank.